Thanks very much, Bernadette, and good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the call today. My name, as announced, is Todd Alder, and I am the CEO and Managing Director of Orbital UAV. Joining me today is David Bonamini, our CFO and Company Secretary. Uh, the purpose of today's call is to talk through the investor presentation that was released to the ASX earlier this week uh, and focus on our recent additional contract win uh, with Textron and the launch of a $6.5 million entitlement offer to support Orbital UAV's continued growth. So Orbital UAV is a world leader in the design and manufacture of engines for military drones, specifically uh, tactical unmanned aerial vehicles. On uh, Monday, we announced the signing of an additional engine program with Textron Systems. This is a, a pleasing announcement and testimony to the growth of this relationship uh, and another exciting engine development program. Textron, like Boeing in situ, is one of the world's largest suppliers of tactical unmanned aerial vehicles or the military drones. I'll talk more about this uh, contract later on the call. Just a quick recap. Last year we made revenue of 31.2 million. Uh, we now have two engine development contracts with Textron Systems. We are targeting a move from two, currently the two engine production lines that we have, through to six engine production lines over the next 24 months. We continue to review market opportunities, both globally and domestically, specifically focusing on the US Army's FTUAS program and Australia's Land 129 program. We are the primary engine supplier to Boeing in Fiji. And revenue will be in line with last year's revenue. And we are on track to post full year net profitability. The tactical UAV market spent around 1.4 US, 1.4 billion on production last year. That equates to an addressable propulsion market for us of around 210 US, 210 million per annum. Now, the tactical drones remain and have a growing importance in the defence equipment portfolio with their important intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. With each of these systems being worth somewhere between US 1.5 or US $4 million, it's critical that the propulsion system that they use is both reliable and also has a very small maintenance program out on the field. And that's where Orbital provides a solution, a solution that is significantly different and improved on our competitors. It's a solution that runs for 500 hours before any maintenance requirements compared to circa 50 hours for our competitors. It's a solution that on the heavy fuel that is a requirement or jet fuel that is a requirement for our customers, it's a solution that our engines start immediately versus a 20 minute warm up cycle for all our other competitors. And it's a solution that Orbital provides that meets manned aerospace standards of propulsion systems and that is another unique reliability standard of our propulsion system versus our competitors. And I think that's why we have been able to, over the last 24, 36 months, to increase our Tier 1 US customer defence portfolio from Boeing in situ to now Boeing in situ, two engines with Textron systems, an engine with the largest Singapore defence company and an R&D, an exciting R&D program with Northrop Grumman. I'll now spend uh, the next few minutes just going through each one of those uh, relationships, programs, 
and to provide an update of where we are. Boeing in situ relationship continues well with the existing long-term agreement, which provides us with the opportunity to provide orbital engines across their entire fleet of vehicles. Boeing and Situ have of late faced increasing competition. There are new entrants into an, this expanding and exciting field. And Boeing and Situ are finding that they need to compete a little more with a little bit more agility. In addition, the US military withdrawal from Afghanistan has hit near-term engine demand from Boeing in situ. The ramifications of the outcomes from that were earlier in this calendar year, we announced a downgrade in production volumes for one of our engine production lines. We remain on track with our second production line, with the forecasted production volumes. And albeit there was a delay in our third engine production line, we're confident, as announced, that we'll have that starting production before the end of this calendar year. We do forecast continued or conservative volumes for the remainder of this year for Boeing and Fitchy as they work through their uh, competitive landscape. We are confident that Boeing in situ will return in 12 to 18 months' time with our more predictive and bullish volumes from them. Part of our customer diversification uh, program has uh, been based on Texton Systems, a key uh, and globally significant supplier of tactical drones. We were thrilled to announce an engine development program earlier this calendar year, and of course, uh, on Monday of this week, announcing a second engine program with Textron Systems. Um, the exciting thing about the second engine program uh, is that it is a 12-month development program, and we'll see us ready to provide production engines to Textron in financial year 23. Obviously, and as announced, those financial production volumes will be dependent on customer demand at that time. But uh, what we're thrilled with is this growing and deepening relationship with Textron Systems. Our programs with Singapore uh, Defence Company in Northrop Grumman, uh, we remain on track with our Singapore Engine Development Program. This is an engine development program for their domestic defence needs. Uh, the Singapore Defence Organisation has aspirations uh, to market their solution globally. Uh, we uh, continue to um, develop uh, the prototypes and we've announced to the market the on-time delivery of two prototype engines um, and uh, confident that we will have production-ready engines for our Singapore customer uh, also ready in FY23. The Northrop Grumman uh, funded uh, research and development program uh, is a really exciting one for us. Uh, we see the market requiring more electrical power for either increased payloads or for electronic pulse requirements. Um, this is demanding uh, creative ways of providing this energy rather than just larger and larger engines. And this is the work that we're doing with Northrop Grumman on a hybrid engine capability um, and we remain on track with that uh, program for a, uh, a bench test uh, solution uh, early next year. As noted, with the additional customer portfolio, uh, we uh, continue to target the expansion of our engine production lines. Currently two engine production lines looking to have six engine production lines up and running within the next 24 months. To support this growth, we'll be investing in our contracted engine development programs. We'll be investing in enhancing the company's production facility capabilities here in Perth, and obviously in continued research and development of products for this exciting industry. 
In addition to the uh, growth or the six, the targeted six engine production lines, uh, we keep an eye on the market developments. And as I noted, particularly there is a significant program, the United States Army Future Tactical Unmanned Air System Program. That is a replacement for um, the current platform they have, which is the Shadow Unmanned Vehicle. There are four down-selected customers that are uh, competing for this program. Um, we have relationships with two of these customers and are talking to the other two. The FTUAS, so the United States Army Program, is divided into an increment one and an increment two. Increment one uh, will be flying, and that's a small expeditionary force, uh, enabling the Army to assess, the US Army to assess capabilities, before then down selecting uh, to two bidders for an increment two runoff. Increment two uh, is the significant uplift for those that are selected uh, in any production volumes, and that is likely to be out in FY24 or FY25. Before then, there is work for us and uh, production runs uh, smaller batch engines on increment one, and uh, as and when uh, they are nominated, uh, we would be advising the market. Here in Australia, we've got two programs of work. They're called Land 129, which is for the Army, obviously, and C129 for the Navy. Uh, we're very excited to be for the Army, uh, the propulsion system of choice for both down-selected bidders in situ Pacific and Textron systems. Uh, we would hope to make an announcement sometime this year when the Army has uh, selected the winner of, uh, of those programs. C129, the uh, Navy process, there are four um, down-selected bidders for that. It is running uh, a year or 12 months uh, later than the Army uh, down-select process. There are four uh, down-selected sort of bidders. We have engine solutions for two, and we're talking uh, with the third down-selected bidder, and I'd hope to be able to announce something uh, with them in due course. Another couple of exciting opportunities that uh, we're looking at is uh, there is a US Navy opportunity, um, and we are talking with um, the, the platform provider. Uh, they are requiring a, a heavy fuel engine solution. Uh, we have established some credibility, obviously, with our uh, work with uh, Textron and Boeing, um, and we would hope that uh, we would be a preferred engine developer for uh, that exciting US Navy opportunity, and that is the US Navy, again, surveillance and intelligence. But there's also an additional market or opportunity that the US Navy are looking at, and that is logistics, so cargo logistics. They have a lot of helicopters or ships doing ship-to-ship -ship or ship-to-shore cargo deliveries, and a lot of those deliveries are for packages that are under 10 kilograms. The US uh, uh, Navy has been funding uh, an unmanned solution, and I'm happy to say that we are uh, in conversations with... Um, um, the platform uh, providers f to look to supply a propulsion system for that exciting opportunity. Now, obviously, nothing signed there, nothing may be signed, but um, it, it's, a, it's another area or another market for us, and uh, I would hope in due course we could announce something to the market uh, further on that. Um, so we sort of see that uh, the UAV uh, industry with uh, the work that we currently have on contract um, the UAV industry with the exciting opportunities in the US Army, the US Navy, and then both here uh, in the Army and the Navy here in Australia, um, to be um, quite buoyant. Uh, but uh, also, um, uh, we're quite buoyed with uh, the overall uh, defence budgets, um, particularly here in Australia, um, supporting uh, companies like ours that are in the defence industry. Um, I note that um, um, we um, have announced the uh, entitlement offer to help support our growth aspirations. Uh, I note that, um, that uh, we announced a $6.5 million uh, funding uh, program uh, with a, 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 an issue price of 50 cents per share and a one for six uh, offer. Um, it was pleasing to have uh, our cornerstone shareholders 
uh, both UIL and First Centia uh, commit to their full entitlements uh, as it was uh, that each of the directors have committed to their full entitlements. We note that uh, offer booklets uh, will be going out uh, this Friday um, and also uh, that the offer extends through to the uh, 5th of November. Well, look, in conclusion, um, just uh, Orbital UOV continues to deliver on our customer diversification strategy. Uh, we're a, a growing business and uh, targeting um, those current two engine production lines to expand to six engine production lines over our next 24 months. Uh, we continue to track uh, the exciting new opportunities within the, the UAV market and we remain uh, on track to deliver um, revenue in line with FY21 and net profitability. So I'd just like to thank um, those that have participated on the call uh, and we look forward to continuing to um, announce positive news uh, as we round out uh, this calendar year.